What is fortunate is that God designed humans, not the scientists. So what do I mean by that? What I mean by that is that when scientists look at something, they'll see it through their own eyes and they, see, they miss what's the obvious. So if we're going to talk about metabolism during exercise, this is where the body stores its fuels, either as carbohydrate in the liver or in muscle or as triglycerides in the fat. And I spent 33 years or so studying carbohydrate metabolism from glycogen to, 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 carbo to, to, to lactate. In, for example, in muscle, I spent a whole lot of time studying how quickly you can absorb carbohydrate in the gut. All the time, we were looking at carbohydrates and we were looking, forgetting about fat. And so on this diagram, you can see what's the focus. The focus is carbohydrate. Why? Because I was funded by the carbohydrate industry to prove carbohydrates make you run faster. So my bias was there. But when you actually look at the real picture, look where the energy is. That's where the energy is. So God must have designed it for a reason to put all that energy into fat and so little energy into carbohydrate. There must be a reason. So there, there it is. This is the comparison. This is how much energy you have in fat and that's how much energy you have in carbohydrate. So when you just look at that, how do you think God designed us? To burn carbohydrate or to burn fat? Now what happened historically was that so it's been estimated that adipose tissue at stores alone can supply sufficient energy for nearly four days of running compared to less than two hours using muscle glycogen stores. So there has to be a reason why that was so. Now I spent, as I've said, years and years and years studying where the energy came from during exercise. So we had people exercise for three hours and we measured exactly how much fat they burned, how much glucose and how much muscle glycogen. And we studied them when they were non-loaded and we studied them when they were carbohydrate loaded. And what you notice is when you're carbohydrate loaded, you burn much less fat. So you burn much more carbohydrate. So in hindsight, it seems that we wanted to prevent all fat oxidation. That was our goal, and we didn't realize it. Why would you want to stop all fat oxidation? But that's what happens if you prescribe carbohydrates. And we couldn't see that at the time, and many still don't understand that, that the more carbohydrate you eat, the less fat you're going to burn. So you're inhibiting the one fuel that is a, a huge amount in the body. So then we even went further and we studied exogenous carbohydrate. That's carbohydrate that you take in by mouth. And then you can see that it replaces some of the endogenous carbohydrate. And again, the fat is not being burned. You're mainly burning carbohydrate. So the focus was and is on maximum carbohydrate use and sparing glycogen by increasing exogenous glucose delivery. But the best way to spare muscle glycogen is to you burn more fat. But we couldn't see it. We were so ingrained to thinking that carbohydrate is everything that we just ignored the role of fat. Here, for example, we'll show you, this was an athlete I helped become one of the greatest athletes in South Africa. And this is 1981 when we were researching and helping him and he said it's not possible for me to run my best in a long distance race without ingesting a high carbohydrate drink, especially for the last hours of the race. And we developed the first goo in the whole world was developed by myself and by him. And here it is. The Leffen Fordyce Rose Milk Squeezy is the original carbohydrate syrup product available to endurance athletes. That's how history will remember the two of us as <laughs> <laughs> producing this carbohydrates.